Let's talk about making a Sakaban game. In Sakaban games, you push boxes around in a grid to try to get them into their correct location, and typically in a level that's so small that it turns into a puzzle game. So I have a player object, a box to push around, a wall to stop the player, a marker object I can use for object picking, a floor for the background, and goals, spaces that I want to push the boxes to. If I go to the events, we'll start with movement. In this case I'm not using the built-in top-down behavior because I need a very specific kind of movement. So in this example I have a variable for x move and y move that I'm going to use to tell the player to move up, down, left, or right. So if I press the A key on the keyboard, it will change the X move position to negative 64. So we can tell the character to go left 64 pixels, which is the width of the player object and the size of our grid. And we do the same thing for the other key presses. Now these don't need to be key presses on a keyboard. I could put on-screen controls into the game scene and use that to control the character on a mobile device. And then if I go down, we'll see how we're using those variables. So if the variable for X or Y is not equal to zero, which means we press one of those buttons, we'll create a marker object on the player. And then with that marker, using a while event type, which you can get by right clicking on an event, going down to add other and finding while. And you need to be careful with this kind of event because if the condition stays true, your game will freeze and it won't render the next frame. So for this, if the marker is in collision with an object from the object group that I'm calling objects, which is both the box and the player, then change the text variable direction of that object to move and change the position of the marker to equal the marker's position plus the X and Y variable. So if I press the D key, the marker will spawn on the player change the player's direction variable so it says move, and then it will change position to be 64 pixels over into the next square on the grid. And if there's nothing there, then this condition is no longer true, so it will move on down the event sheet. But if there's a box there, it will do the same thing it did to the player. Change the direction variable to move, and then move the marker over again. And if there's another box, it'll do the same thing and it will keep hopping down the line until it's no longer in collision with an object from the object group. So when the marker finally gets to a point where it's not in collision with an object from that object group, we check if one of these conditions are true. If the marker is in collision with a wall, or if the marker is in collision with a goal that has its animation changed to filled. So if I go to the goal object, you can see that its second animation is filled and it's a box. Because when you put one of these boxes onto the goal point, it'll delete the original box and change the goal to filled, which will then act as a block that will stop it from being pushed through. And if it's in collision with a wall or a goal that is filled, we delete the marker and then pick all objects and change their direction variable back to none. And that way nothing happens. So the marker will hop through the objects, hit the wall, get deleted, and then change all of the objects back to none. But if the marker still exists and it gets past that event, this time, we're still going to change the object back to none, but before we do that, any object that had its text variable changed to move has its position changed based on the x and y variables that we changed above. So we check which ones were tagged to move, change their position, and then change them all back to none. So a quick recap, when there's no box next to the character and we tell it to move over, it creates the marker on the character and then the marker moves over one tile. Because it's not in collision with the wall, or a goal that's filled, it will move on, see that the player has its object variable changed to move, and then add the x and y coordinates to that of the player, and then change it back to none. But if there's a box there, that marker will hop along the boxes until it gets to a point where it's not in collision with the player or boxes. And if that point isn't a wall, or a goal that's filled, all of those objects that were tagged to move will move over, and then get set back to none. But if there was a wall there, all of the objects will be set back to none without being moved. And then, if a box is over a goal object, and the animation of that goal object is empty, delete the box, and change the animation of the goal object to filled. So now, that goal object is going to act like the wall. And then, once all of that is done, we reset the scene variables for X and Y to be zero so they're not triggering that above event anymore. And then the game is won 
when the number of goal objects with the filled animation is equal to the total number of the goal objects in the scene, at which point we show the win layer. And then lastly, if you mess up and need to restart, we're using a custom button object, which can be found in the asset store, and then using its condition is clicked. We change the scene to the current scene, which is an expression you can get by typing scene into the expression builder. Now if you like tiled based games, then you might be interested in this video where we show how to do the basics of a city builder game. <laughs> 